Good evening. It is good to be here with you all. It's good to see everyone out this evening. I'm so very thankful for the opportunity to, to be here with you all. I was thinking this afternoon how, how thankful I am for this congregation, how uh, you all have provided me with opportunities that, that I will never forget for being able to be able to stand behind the pulpit. And I couldn't help about thinking through the years after about all the wonderful examples that I've had in my life growing up here. And I'm so very thankful for, for this eldership, for this church, and for all the wonderful examples that I've had in my life making me realize that God needs to be first in my life in all things. For that, I am forever grateful for that. Tonight, I want to begin the lesson off with an illustration I saw when, when I was a little younger. It was the illustration that all of us, that should teach all of us about the brevity of life and the vast eternity that will follow after our life here on earth. When you look at this rope, I want you to imagine that it goes on forever and ever. I want you to imagine that this rope never has an end to it. Now, as you can see at the beginning of this rope, there's a piece of tape. And I want this piece of tape to, for ourselves, for us to think that this piece of tape is, is our life. That this piece of tape is, is the time that we have here on this earth and the part that's after the tape the part that has no wind is eternity so when you look at this when you see the, the short how short the tape is compared to eternity our life is so very short brethren this reminds us of the importance of of making every moment count while we are here on this earth Tonight, I want us to focus on what is represented by the tape. Brother, I want us to ask ourselves a question tonight. What have we done? Or, or what are we doing in our lives for Jesus Christ? It was just read a few moments ago there in James chapter 4 and verse 14. The Bible tells us that our life, it's as a vapor. Our life is here for a short little while and then it's, it's gone. Friends, we're only here for a short amount of time. Do we really grasp that? Young people, when, when we think about our lives, do, do we really think about how short our lives really are compared to eternity? Friends, we need to remember that eternity is forever and ever. It's never going to have an end. In Ephesians chapter 5, as it was just read, Paul he says there, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. There in verse 15, he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He goes on to say, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Brethren, we see Paul's encouragement here to, to look carefully how we walk. We see Paul's encouragement to, to be wise, redeeming the time, using the time that we have here on earth to live for God, to, to walk in the light, to walk in wisdom. And brethren, to bring souls to the cross of Jesus Christ. I was blessed to be able to go to Willow Avenue last week where Brother Don Blackwell was having his gospel meeting there. And in one of his specific lessons, he was talking about how his accident has caused him to think more uh, and be more aware of how short time really is here on this earth. And he says that on a daily basis that he thinks about how he could have opened his eyes up in eternity rather than a hospital bed. Brother, I'm continuing to learn how important time really is I'm continuing to learn how precious our time really is you see we go throughout our lives and, and we see that there seems to never be enough time to get everything accomplished and so we see that that's why that these verses here 
are, they serve as a great reminder for all of us here to prioritize, to use our time here on earth wisely for the work of the Lord, and, and to not waste our time here on earth on things that, that really don't have any eternal value. We sung the song, Where the Soul Never Dies. Brethren, we need to understand that each of us here tonight, we have a soul. And we need to understand that our soul will be in one of two places for, for all of eternity, forever and ever, in a place that has no end, either heaven or hell. So knowing this, knowing that we're either going to be in heaven or hell for all of eternity, are, are we truly redeeming the time? Or are we truly sharing the gospel with others? Are we truly making it a priority to bring other souls to the cross? Are we bringing souls to Christ? I read about a celebrity. And this one celebrity, he was a proclaimed atheist. And he made this statement. But before the statement was made, after he had he performed one of these shows, and after his show was done, a man had came up to him and he gave him a copy of the Word of God. And in the copy of the Word of God that this man gave him, he wrote inside of the cover his contact information and he wrote a few other things that he wanted uh, this celebrity to know. And the celebrity was taken back by this jester. And he really appreciated what this man had done by giving him a copy of the Word of God. As the celebrity was talking about this later on, he made the statement by saying, he said that he had never respected people who say they have the truth. They say they know the truth, but they do not tell anyone because it might be socially awkward. Brethren, he went on to say, he said, if a person believes there is a heaven and a hell and people around them could be going to hell, listen to what this proclaimed atheist said. He said, how much do you have to hate somebody to believe that heaven is real and eternal life is possible and to never tell them that? Brethren, I don't know what had occurred in this man's life. But this statement made me pause to think to myself. It made me think to myself, why am I not doing more? Why am I not doing more to share the gospel with others? Why am I not doing more to bring other souls to the cross of Christ? Why am I not doing as much as I can to make sure that other people have the very same hope of eternal life that I do? Why am I not doing more? We can go back to Matthew chapter 28 and hear the words of Jesus once again. There in verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power or, or all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Brethren, when, when I read this verse, when I read this, I learned that evangelism, it's not an option. So brethren, in thinking about why we, we may not share our faith like we should, in thinking about why we do not share the gospel, and uh, in thinking about why we don't evangelize like we should, what are the reasons for that? What are the excuses for that? See, are, are we too busy in our everyday life to, to tell someone about God who, who sent His Son to die on the cross for, for the sins of the whole world? Or are we so caught up in ourselves that, that we neglect to tell others about Jesus Christ? Do we put it to the side? And do we say, well, well, it's the preacher's job. Do we put the responsibility on the elders and the deacons? Brethren, that's not what we read. Brethren, that's not what Jesus said. So tonight, as we think about how short our lives 
really are. I want us to think about barriers that may be keeping us from sharing the gospel. Talking about barriers that may hinder us from telling someone about the cross of Christ. What about the barrier of fear? The barrier of fear. You know, at times we may have fear. At times we may be afraid when, when thinking about approaching people, especially those who we know closely or those who we love. We may, uh, we may be afraid when we think about approaching people about the gospel. We may have a fear about sharing the gospel with them, sharing the truth with them. We may have the fear of failure. The fear of failure. People may say, well, we may just not be good at it. I may not be good at it. Some people will, we may have thoughts to ourselves and say, well, well, I'm just not good at talking to other people about their soul. That I just don't really know how, how to word things in a certain way to persuade someone. Brethren, when we're talking to someone about the Bible, we must let the Bible speak for itself. We must let the Bible speak for itself. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The Bible says that the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Brethren, we need to be willing to share. And we need to understand that the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God will prick hearts. May we never let the fear of failure keep us from telling someone about Jesus Christ. But what about the fear of rejection? The fear of rejection. Well, they may just turn us away. Well, what if I say something to them and, and they reject what I'm trying to say to them? What if I try to say something to them and, and they just won't listen to what I'm trying to tell them? Brethren, when this happens, we need to understand that, that we will have planted the seed. Brethren, if someone does not listen, let that not discourage us. Well, let's plant the seed and let's let the Word of God do the teaching. Let's not let the fear of rejection keep us from spreading the gospel. Or what about the fear of being inadequate? The fear of being inadequate. Well, I just don't have enough knowledge. Well, what if they ask me a question and, and I just don't know what to say to them? I've always been taught that if I was ever asked a question and I didn't know it right off the top of my head, I simply tell them, well, I don't know that answer, but I will study from that. I will give you a biblical answer by the time that I see you next. Brethren, the Bible tells us to study the Word. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, and the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 that we must be always ready to give an answer to all men, to every man that asks of the reason of the hope that is within us as Christians. May we never let the fear of being inadequate keep us from sharing the good news. But what about fear of harming relationships. The fear of maybe losing a friend. Or the fear of maybe making a family member mad at us. Well, what if I try to talk to, to my family member? Or what if I try to, to talk to my close friend? And they get mad at me. And, and they reject me. And they don't talk to me for a long time. Rather, I know that that has to be, and I know that it is a difficult situation, but I'd rather someone be mad at me than for them to be in eternity and them saying, He never mentioned Him to me. He never said anything about Jesus Christ to me. The fear of harming relationships. Let that not cause us to not share the gospel but the fear of being judged. What about that? The fear of being judged. Well, what if I say something to someone about the Bible and, and they just begin to, to judge me for what I believe? Brethren, we must not worry about what others are going to say. We must not worry about what others are going to think because at some point in time, there are going to be people who laugh at us. There are going to be people who make fun of us and 
And at certain times, there will be people who say awful things to us and about us. But we must be willing to endure to the end. We as Christians, we need to remember our goal. And we need to press towards that goal. And we need to keep spreading the gospel of Christ. Brethren, may we never use excuses for not talking to someone about their soul. There are souls who are starving for someone to share the gospel with them. There are people who are longing for the gospel to be spread to them. We may be the only one who shares it with them. So uh, the barrier of fear may be something that keeps us from spreading the gospel. What about the fear of us lacking certain things? The things that I am lacking... What if I'm lacking understanding? I, I just haven't really studied the Bible enough. Or I'm lacking knowledge. I, I need to know more. Brethren, all of us, we need to study more. All of us, we, we need to know more. So all of us should take time. We must make time to grow in the grace, to grow in the knowledge of the Lord, 2 Peter 3.18. Brethren, if we're not feeding ourselves every day with the Word of God, we're not going to grow. Every day, if we're not feeding ourselves with the Word of God, we're not going to mature. So if we're lacking understanding, if we're lacking knowledge, let's dig deeper in the Word of God. Let's study the Word of God more. What if I'm lacking faith? I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Brethren, God will help us when we put forth the effort. God will always give us the strength that we need. God will always give us the courage that we need. That is when we are willing to share. That is when we are willing to put forth the effort. What if I'm lacking courage? If I'm lacking courage, you know, I'm reminded of the words that are found in Joshua chapter 1 where it's stated more than just one time, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and be very courageous. Brethren, it takes courage to talk to people. But brethren, when we think about it, we have the Word of God. We have all that we need to get to heaven. We have all that we need to get us through this life. How can we not share that with others? So if we're lacking knowledge and understanding, let's study more. If we're lacking faith, let's, let's put in the effort and realize that God will give us the strength. If we're, if we're lacking courage, let's be reminded that we need to put our faith and trust in God and He will give us strength. But I want us all to listen to this one. What if we're lacking love for lost souls? What if we're lacking love for lost people? You know, we just don't really think about others all that much. Or, or we are satisfied with where we are right now and, and we just lack concern for other souls. Brethren, we should not value our friendship more than we love people's souls. We need to understand that the devil is working and he wants us to doubt that we can make a difference as Christians. Brethren, we can make a difference with God on our side, with, with God's help and with our willingness to grow, with our willingness to grow in knowledge and in truth. We can help bring other souls to Jesus Christ. Tonight, let's put away doubting and let's start doing. Let's be an example before others. Let's go to the book of Colossians. In Colossians chapter 4. Paul says there in verse 2, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bond that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. 
Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So here we can see the words that can help us in our efforts to save souls. Here in verse one, we see Paul. He he basically reminds us that we are to treat others the way that we want to be treated. I'm so thankful that that someone loved me enough to see that I heard the gospel, to see that I heard the good news. And brethren, I should do no less for others. We need to be a people of prayer. Paul says in verse 2 to continue in prayer. You know, we are very quick and rightfully so to, to pray for the physical needs of others. We're so quick to pray for sickness, for, for, not, for financial problems, for uh, marriage issues, for jobs. But brethren, how much do we seek the Lord on the behalf of the lost? We should pray for those who are sick. I don't want you to misunderstand me. If I'm sick, I want prayers of a faithful brother. I want the prayers of a faithful sister. We read in James chapter 5, there verses 13 through 16, that, that yes, we should pray the physic for the physically sick. But, and it is great to, to pray for those, to have a list of people who are sick that, that we can go to God on their behalf. But brethren, isn't it even more important to have a spiritual list and to commit to praying for souls who are sick? To pray for those who, whose souls are lost? You see, I know I had people praying for me before I became a Christian. And I should do no less for others who are lost. I heard a preacher quoting someone, and I didn't catch the person's name who made this following statement, but it really made me pause to think. He said, if sinners are going to be condemned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies. If they will perish, let them perish with our arms around their knees. Let no one go to hell unwarned. Let no one go to hell unprayed for. Brethren, let's be a people of prayer. Let's be a people of warning. When we pray for the lost, let's pray that a door be opened just like Paul did here in verse 3. We need to pray that a way will be made for us to be able to share the gospel with them. Sometimes a door may be opened during a, a time of tragedy. For a person. And we need to be willing to walk through that door to provide encouragement, to provide comfort, to provide love, and to show a Christian example. Sometimes a door may be open through a major life change. Maybe it's someone moving to a new area. You see, brethren, we need to be consistent in praying for others. And we need to be consistent by walking through the doors that are open to us. And when we pray to God, let's pray with confidence. Brethren, God answers prayers because God is faithful. God is just. As the saying is, if we pray for rain, do we take an umbrella with us? Or are we leaving it behind? Verse 5. And Colossians 4 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. You see, we are to redeem the time. We are to use every opportunity that we have to do good, to live a life of faithfulness before others, to walk in wisdom before the whole world. In school, we used to have show and tell. I'm sure everyone is familiar with that, where we would always bring something in, We'd show it to all of our classmates. We, we'd show it to our teachers and, and we'd talk about it and, and tell them all about the thing that we had brought in. But brethren, as Christians, our lives ought to be a show and tell. That we are showing our faith in God by, by how we live. Friends, the world is looking for that. We don't want to have that lifestyle of, of well, do what I say and, and not as I do. But rather, rather, let us live our lives by the book. Let us uh, live our lives by the example that Jesus said while he was here on earth. That's what people are looking for. We need to live Christ out in our daily lives each and every day. 
And we know that the evidence of Christ in our lives is, is the fruits of the Spirit. We know the love, the joy, the peace, the goodness, the faithfulness, and the gentleness, uh, the self-control, the kindness, and the patience. You see, when we show these in our lives, people see Jesus Christ. When people look at us and they see love, when people look at us and they see kindness and, and, and peace, they see Jesus Christ. At work or, or at school or, or on social media, people see how we conduct ourselves. When, when we are, are out in public, if we're behind a screen, let's show people Jesus Christ. Brethren, the world watches our walk more than our talk. And they judge and they measure our talk by the way we walk. We need to redeem the time. Because the time's running short. Verse 6, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. When we share the gospel with others, let our words be spoken with grace be seasoned with salt you know it's so easy at times to to want to argue about what the bible really says but friends arguing gets us nowhere see in conversations with with others when we have a conversation with others talking to them about the bible let's strive to be kind let's strive to be gracious paul said that that i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of to save, Romans 1, verse 16. Brethren, let's speak the truth and, and, and let's do it in love. There is a right way to proclaim the gospel. I started college last semester and, and I've seen these so-called preachers that will, will go to college campuses and, and they'll, they'll be standing there and they'll be yelling and hurling insults. They'll, they won't be sharing the truth to the people who walk by, who pass by. And, and I've seen the reactions that other people will have to them. And they're not positive. Brethren, that's not how things ought to be done. Let's share the gospel in love. I read a statement that, that really made me think. It said, saved people on this side of heaven owe the gospel to lost people on this side of hell. Tonight, I'm so thankful to be a Christian. I'm so thankful to have the hope of heaven, the hope of eternal life. And I want everyone to have that very same hope. Brethren, we may be the one person to reach out to someone. So when we pray, let's pray diligently. When we pray, let's pray that God opens doors. When we pray, let's pray that, that we make the most out of every opportunity that we have. Let's pray that we say the right things in the right way. Let's pray that we bring souls to the cross of Jesus Christ. We know that God wants all men to be saved more than we do, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. I'm thankful for the examples that I had before me when, when I was lost. And brethren, tonight I want to be an example for others. What about you? I would hope that everyone here tonight would want that same thing. Tonight I pray that this evening everyone will realize that, that there are souls in this world who are lost. There are souls in this world who need the gospel and I pray that we will not be content by remaining silent. I want us to remember our rope. Our time here on earth is short. And what we do here, what we do here affects where we're going to be here. Brethren, we need to be a people who share and it may be the case tonight that there may be someone here who has never obeyed the gospel. If that's the case, you can come tonight, be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, and you can leave here tonight a New Testament Christian. 
and you can begin to share the gospel to all who are lost. It could also be the case that there's one here tonight, maybe you've been a Christian for several years, but you've fallen away. If that's the case, you can come home tonight. We will pray for you. We'll pray with you. And God will help you. God will give you the strength that you need. If you need to make changes in your life, why not come tonight? We need to redeem the time because our time here on earth is running short. We need to make the most out of every opportunity that we have. If there's a need for anyone here tonight, won't you come as we stand and as we sing?